Hey everyone, it's Wilson and <clears throat> here's my weekly recap that I said I was going to post on my trades. I actually made a lot more trades than this, but uh, these are the stocks that I wanted to kind of highlight and show some of my mistakes uh, as well as some of my gains and kind of go into how they're super unique and why I chose them. Uh, first thing first, there was a stock that I talked about in another video where I made uh, over a grand in the trade and that was a very popular stock the SDRL uh, I want to kind of look into this real quick and go over the days that I traded uh, one thing that I think a lot of traders don't tend to look at is the overall uh, history of a stock and the patterns and the trades and and the trends that are going on right so uh, this is a very good example that you can take a look at which is SDRL if you notice uh, the day that it started to trend up and build up the volume, you will notice that uh, the most of the, the high volumes for long calls start at the beginning of the day. So here's the first day. It opens right here at around 23 cents and then it goes up and then it slowly just consolidates throughout the entire day, right? So if we move into day two, same thing. The, the history repeats itself. That's one thing you have to look at. You can't just look at the daily charts or like a two or three day chart. You have to look at the overall picture. And this is a stock where I made a lot of money off of because I made two trades in two different days and I follow the pattern. See, in the beginning of the day, it goes up and it consolidates and then goes back down. Uh, same thing right here, right? It goes up and then consolidates and then uh, Post market, it, it starts to go down and then it, it consolidates again. Um, if you move on to the third day, same exact thing. It hit its highs in, in midday, but as you can tell, most of the momentum happens in the beginning of the day. So uh, even though I don't recommend trading in the first 30 minutes most of the time because you have to see how the patterns move, if people panic, if short sellers kick in and stuff like that. But it's a good indicator that if you see these patterns happen every single day that you might want to place your early long calls in the beginning of the day and you have to follow the trend. You know, history repeats itself and it goes on right here, you know, then then it does it for this day as well. You see the big dip and then it goes up to, to the highs of the days. Um, uh, then the stock started to die off over time, but you see as right here the next day, the action is always in the beginning. The, the buy volumes are always in the beginning and that spikes the price up. So this is a good thing to indicate. So let's say you, you, you saw that the stock was gaining momentum. You, you heard about it in chat rooms or in alerts, uh, email subscriptions, whatever. And you didn't trade the first day. That's okay. As long as you start analyzing these patterns, you can get in the next couple days and follow the same pattern and you will see the same results. Remember, look at the overall trend line. If you don't see something in in uh, in a couple days, then you know navigate to maybe 20 days and see how the trend lines are moving. You know, follow the pattern. Uh, it's, it's a great way to improve your trades if you look at it long term instead of just looking at it from a short term perspective, right? So back to my trades. Uh, I did fairly well this week. I'm in green. I made a couple bad trades uh, that I wasn't too happy with and they got me kind of on tilt. I was a little bit pissed off and I lost focus, but uh, that happens. You know, there's always going to be red and there's always going to be down as long as the weekly and the monthly gains is high. So uh, the first trade I made is a uh, GoPro. Uh, I thought this was a unique trade because GoPro is actually doing really well. And right here, you're looking at the overall view, remember. See, you see the lows at around 8.77 and the highs at 11.19, which was a couple days ago. Uh, I got in at right here, as you can see, at 10.81 and I exited at 11.86. Now, this wasn't a day trade. This was a swing trade where I got in and I held over the weekend all the way up to its highs, right? Uh, the thing about this trade right here is that I decided to hold past the weekend because this is a solid company. I don't recommend doing this for like penny stocks or like uh, those those biotech stocks. Uh, I know a lot of friends that are really good at trading biotech stocks. I trade it as well, but I only treat it as a day trade. 
And the main reason is because those stocks, they're, most of them, their companies are, aren't, aren't that great. You know, they're in debt. They're not doing well. Uh, they don't really have consistent news. Most of the time it's because of a contract or some sort of uh, like conference agreement, some sort of approval that they're going to another trial. And that will spike the stock up. But it doesn't last for more than two or three days, right? It's really rare that you see that it lasts for that long. And uh, for GoPro, it's more of a solid company. And if you look at the trends, is, I mean, like, look at this overall thing. It's, it has its up and downs, but it's always these curves, right, where it has a pullback. And that's a very um, smooth trade, a smooth chart to kind of get into. And uh, so I bought in this, and then I held over the weekend. And then as soon as it hit its highs, I got my exit, and I was able to clock in $1,000. And fifty dollars for a, a little bit over a nine percent gain on a thousand shares for this trade. So, I liked it a lot. Uh, even if the price dropped below what I got in as, I would have still held it because um, I feel like it's a stock that will go back up, especially with the holidays kicking in. So, uh, I did fairly well, and uh, I'm I'm pretty happy with the trade. I did set my stop losses. But uh, I, I didn't need to, and I took my profits. I believe it will go higher. Uh, right now, it's at $11. Uh, with, with the holidays kicking in and their new releases, I think it can uh, break out, and it can go up to like 12 13 or possibly even higher. Uh, but I want to clock in my profits early, and if it does go lower uh, to the support right here, then what I'll do is I'll buy back in and I'll hold it through the holidays. So uh, that that's kind of my style. Uh, you know, everyone has to figure out their own strategy and their own stocks that work for them. But uh, I like swing trading, and is is what I I feel more confident with for making consistent profits in the long term on my trades. Uh, on my next trade was Groupon. Now Groupon has been a um, a stock that's been slowly climbing up his way right as you can tell if you look at this long trend right here it has this volume you can see from the volume bar down here it has this volume and it slowly goes up without too much of a of a drop right it hasn't really hit a very low support and it has been holding really well and then it started to trend upwards in the last week and uh I exited a little bit too early as you can tell right here I exited at 486 and yesterday hit highs at around uh, 520 uh, so uh, I believe the stock is going up towards an upward momentum with volume kicking in and more people realizing it's a good stock so uh, it will slowly climb up is really good for swing traders but again I took my profit early uh, I should have held a little bit longer but again, profit is profit, and um, if it does continue to go up and it does do well, I mean, if you look at the RSI indicator down here, it's kind of overbought, but uh, if it continues to trend upwards, this is definitely a stock for, for a good swing trade. Uh, but I took my profits, and I took uh, 500 bucks off it, a little bit more than 500 bucks for for uh, a little bit over 5% gain at 2,000 shares. So it was it was good enough for me, and if I do see a good trend going upwards, uh, more volume, more more news, uh, I will buy back in and uh, hold for, for another swing. So that was a good one, and it's been on the upward trend, so I really like this. It's, it's past the, EM, uh, the, the SMA levels, and it's doing really well, you know. Um, there's a new resistance, it, it could slowly break out and do well. The next one is uh, Shopify. So most traders, they're not aware of this stock. But I know the company itself really well. I've been in the e-commerce space. I'm an entrepreneur. I've created multiple shops using Shopify for my businesses. And I know it's a really great platform that more and more e-commerce developers I mean, uh, more and more e-commerce entrepreneurs are diving into. Now, this stock right here peaked high at 123. So when it dropped down, it had a really big drop downwards to about 113, and it actually went even lower. But uh, as soon as it went down there, I knew it was going to go back up. Uh, I mean, 
it, it's a company I believe in. I've been watching for a very, very long time, over a year, and it's always been trending upwards. So that slight drop could have just been a panic, could have been because of news. And if you actually look closely uh, at the time when it dropped, if you looked at the news, all the other retailer stops, uh, stocks dropped as well. So there there was like a, a like a pattern but it doesn't mean it's forever especially with the holidays kicking in that means that you know this is just a panic mode for short sellers so i knew it was going to come back up and it, and all those other stocks that dropped in the same industry did slowly pull its way back up right like lululemon um all these uh um shops kind of stock so i got in at 113 and then uh, I exited at around 116, which was uh, I'm pretty happy with. I actually believe that this stock will go back up to 120, but again, I take my profits early so that I can have the cash to invest in other stocks that can profit me faster. So this was a pretty good, good uh, decent gain at around 2.65%. Uh, made 600 bucks, and I only put in 200 shares because this is more of a bigger stock, uh, and it required more cash flow. So that was uh, all, I, all I was able to put in. Now, uh, this was uh, uh, one of my red trades. I wasn't too happy about this one, AVGR. Uh, a lot of traders got in on this stock. And um, what happened was, I mean, there was a lot of sellers. So let me put in a closer date for you guys. Let's do three days. Right, as you can tell, there was a big short right here. And I'm not much of a short seller, but what happened was I got in, let's say, right, 45. So. Yeah, I think I got in on the upward trend. I don't remember exactly, but I got in on the upward trend, and then uh, I thought it was going to do well. And uh, I didn't cut my losses fast enough. Then the stock just started to drop. And as you can tell, it started to consolidate. And um, I mean, a lot, of, I know a lot of sellers that held on for the next couple of days, but it just started to go downhill the entire time. And it, it, it's holding well, but uh, I mean, I got in, I just got in at its highs. And I tried to get in on the pullback, if I remember correctly, uh, probably one of these pullbacks. And uh, it just wasn't a, a good choice for me. Um, so I, I, I made a bad trade right there and then I ended up losing over uh, a grand because uh, I had 15,000 shares in it and I exited at 38 cents. I uh, had to cut my losses because if you looked at it, uh, the lows actually went all the way down to uh, around like 36, 35. So um, luckily I cut my losses early. It did go back up later in the day to around 40 cents ish, but I would have still lost. So, uh, cut my losses early, had my stop loss, and uh, I'm happy that I exited early, but it wasn't a good trade. Um, I sh I, what I should have done is I actually should have waited for the midday to see how the trend goes, but I traded too early in the day when it was when it had its first pullback. So I thought that the stock along with the volume was gonna to continue to go up, but there were just too many uh, short sellers, there's too many people shorting the stock and it drove down. And and this stock also kind of traded without too many big news. So it was a, it was a risky day trade for me. Uh, I shouldn't have got in because I usually don't trade stocks without history or a trend. Uh, but uh, it was a it was a call out in the chat room that I was in. I saw the momentum. I saw the pullback. I thought I was going to do okay, and uh, it was going to continue to go up, but it dropped. The good thing is I cut my losses early, but this one got me kind of uh, a little bit mad for a little bit. So that was that. Uh, next one, finish line. So finish line has been a stock that I've actually been watching for quite some time. Uh, I knew that it was slowly pulling up from, from the previous trends. Uh, as you can see, this little upward hill trending upwards. Uh, but I didn't expect this big jump, actually. So this is where I got uh, lucky and made my profits. But I got in at this very low, hoping that it would slowly climb back up. And I read the news a couple hours later, and apparently there was a lot of rumors saying that finish line 
was going to get acquired or buy out from another company. So that spiked everything up and it continued to trend upwards. So I had my exit uh, the next day after that. I actually held it overnight. Uh, again, I don't hold companies overnight if they're like biotech companies. But for this one, it's a stock that's been around for a long time. It, it has consistent news. And with such a good news, it means that it will continue to trade upwards. Now, will it be able to hold this type of range? We don't know, right? That was the end of the day. They were able to hold up and downs, but it could have a drop uh, afterwards. So that's why I decided to exit and take my, my uh, over $2 profit on this. I thought it was going to slowly climb up, but this shows, this stock is a very good example of how news can change the movement of a stock. A bad news, like there was a scandal on Adidas and the prices dropped immediately, right? You will see a big red line downwards. But for this one, it was a good news because it was going to be a buyout and it spiked upwards. Now, it could have went either way. So if they had a bad news, then it would have dropped immediately. So this is why it's so important that, I mean, I know a lot of traders, what they do is that they listen to the news, they read the news in the beginning of the day. And that's good. I do the same. But at the same time, you don't know if midday or near the end of the day, some sort of release will come out and if it's a bad one and you see people starting to short then you probably want to get out immediately and place your orders and this is why it's always good to have stop loss right even when you're profiting so let's say you you uh you see that the stock didn't have the spike but it's going upwards and you clocked and you're already past the profit zone what you want to do is you want to set a new stop loss so that in case it does drop because of a news like a bad news like a scandal you would have still made your profit uh, instead of losing everything, right? Uh, so definitely watch the news the entire day. And I'll be making another video later on uh, one of the best ways that you can get instant news uh, using a bunch of tools. And I'll show you all those tools that I use to get those call outs midday or near end day. It doesn't always have to be pre-market news that shows you what it is. But this was a pretty good trade for me. I uh, got in at its lows. I was pretty happy with it. And um, there you go, you know, got in for 1,000 shares, uh, near 20% gain for two grand, you know. So I'm super happy about it, a little bit more than two bucks per share. And uh, that was very good. Uh, now, next stock up is uh, AMMA. So this one's actually a pretty funny one because on the first day that it started to spike upwards right here, I did not trade this stock at all. That um, I was too focused on other stocks and as well as I was in, uh, some position for a few swing trades so I didn't get in the stock but this stock was uh, was discussed a lot and called out a lot in the live chat that I'm a part of and people were watching this stock right so where I actually got in that was the next day which was uh, yesterday actually on, on, on the last day Friday and I knew that the pre-market was way too high I knew that it was going it's go, it's go short. If you look at all the other stocks this comes with trading experience, you knew that when it goes up this high on pre-market, they're going to have there's going to be a strong pullback. So if the market opened right here at 271 and you bought in, you're 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 dropping down 30 cents right away, boy. So uh, I waited. I waited for the first pullback all the way down, right? And then I got in position and as soon as it went above to where I set my profit as, I exited. Um, as you can tell, for the rest of the day, it just consolidated and it started going towards a downward trend. And towards the end of the day, it ended at around 219. Uh, so uh, for trades like this, when you see a mass volume on the first day, and this is one of the reasons why I didn't trade the first day, is because we don't have enough trend pattern yet, right? So if you look at the day before the day started to spike up, there's nothing. It's been like this for a long, long time, a couple months. So when there's no historic data and you can't analyze the trend, you have to be very careful with your trades. And that's why I watched it this first day. I want to see how it goes because for stocks like this, that's, that comes out because of news. So basically, this is an MMA company, a fighting company that started uh, going around the, uh, the U.S. and the world to acquire different uh organizations in in the mixed martial arts 
it's a really good company to be honest uh, I actually think this could be a long hold if you're if you're looking for investment opportunities because the company is growing is acquiring more people and uh, other organizations like UFC can actually buy them out but as a mo momentum trader for this play I had to take my profits so I watched the first day and I knew that for a solid company like this the volume lasts for two or three days so it can still last on Monday and it can still do well but uh, after the first pullback I got in position and as soon as it I, I hit the my profit ranges I got out you know uh, I just had to take my profits before the day slides through now I'm not saying that the stock won't go back up as I said this is not like one of those stupid penny stocks company or OTC stocks that die out overnight this can continue on and it can go back up to like three four dollars even five dollars in the long run but again I take my early profit so I have enough cash to invest into my other trades whether that's swing or momentum but this was a play that a lot of people made money off of uh, especially on the second day and the momentum ride for a couple of days for these stocks after a big news like that so you can see that right here on the bottom where, where the news tab is you see it goes like it purchases another company in the same space and shares jump and I think the way they do it is that they purchase companies and then they take an equity or they have some sort of unique offer I didn't read too much into it but uh, I just know that this is a good company uh, it's profitable and I mean revenue is going up there's no reason why this isn't a solid company to trade uh, for a swing trade or a long term X rats what a fun day for this one let me show you so this is a, a AI company if I remember correctly right yeah AI company and AI company has been hot lately. I mean, there was like four or five supernova kind of stocks in the AI space for the for this week, this entire week. I mean, it's been going crazy. So anything in this space, in this AI space that's so hot, you know that it's not really going to fall too much and that there's going to be a lot of hype over it. You know, it doesn't matter if AI is taking over for reals or if it's just a, a hype you know we know that for this week is a very strong swing so I knew I had to get in this stock and um, it's, it's, there's been a lot of volume for the last couple of days you know this is a trending stock now I did underestimate the stock a little bit I didn't think that it would do this well right but in fact it did it did really really well so I'm happy where I sold it at. Uh, I think my entry point could have been lower. So I bought in towards the end. Uh, again, usually I don't like to trade the, the first 30 minutes unless I know what the trend is. Um, unless I've seen a day or two of the same trend or I've seen how the, the stock goes. I like to wait until the, the market opens watch how it trades for a little bit and then get in um, and try to go for these you know big spike ups so I did catch it at a spike upwards um, I'm pretty happy with it and uh, I exited on time before the market ended but look at this I mean post market 285 I think the stock will continue to rally up but um, I could have gotten lower maybe at as low as at like two dollars uh, when it consolidated uh, for the bullish flag, but I actually got in on the upward trend, so I still profited uh, And I had a good exit, but it seems like it's still going higher and I could have held it um, But I got in at 216 and then I exited at 249 at 5,000 shares, so uh, Not too bad. I, it could have still went higher. I could have got out at maybe like, you know, like 250 uh, but you know profit is profit and uh, next time I'll probably set better stop loss and that was kind of my mistake so you know set it higher above my profit when it's continue going up instead of exiting and taking my profits IZEA man another very very powerful stock uh, a lot of upward momentum you know a lot of panic mode right here as you can see in this day so this is something that that a lot of short sellers would have would have uh, started shorting because 
people panic, right? It hits this panic mode early in the day. Again, this is why the first one hour or 30 minutes of the day is so scary to trade because you see this upward momentum. So you're like, okay, yeah, let me try to get in. So as soon as you get in, if you don't sell, then boom, the panic mode comes in and this all happens within like, you know, five to 10 minutes of, of the day. So if you're watching like five, six stocks in the 30 minute time frame, you could have lost everything and it continues to go down, then it consolidates, right? So this is like a pattern bow stock. And when, when, when there's a stock that's so low of a float and so high of volume is so discussed uh, all over the places, uh, all over different chat rooms are still talked about, it, it goes wild, right? Prices changes. But, um, you know, this is a stock that, a, a, a good thing about a stock like this is that when you see a panic mode short sell like this, you know it's going to get back its momentum, whether it just consolidates like this or if it goes back up. So what you're hoping for is that you want to buy at the low dip and then it goes back upwards instead of this, you know, just up and down, up and down, up and down. But um, I got in when when it was at its dip and then I got, uh, got out at its top and I didn't play the stock anymore afterwards. Uh, but nevertheless, it was a it was a pretty good trade, um, and I believe it will continue to hold its volume on for for the next week as well. Uh, it's a company that people are still looking at, and I think right now um, it is is still a good play for the next week. So I got in at six point four, exit at six point six before because I was worried that there'll be more panic mode going on, and the prices were just swinging up and down way too fast. But I got in at five thousand shares for a four point four percent profit at uh, one thousand dollar gain. Now here are the three, uh, well ignore SDR, but here are the three stocks that I'm still in position for for a swing, uh, Snapchat because they released news that they were going to offer some sort of new tools for advertisers. And I think that is super important because uh, that's that's where the revenue model runs at. Uh, so, I mean, I don't just look at news, even though news at Catalyst and stuff like that is a big indicator for me to trade. I like to look at the long-term trends for a stock like this, right? So not too far back, but let's just say something at 10 days, right? As you can tell in the 10 days, it's trading at its highest at uh, 11, I mean, at 1543. So it had made its way downwards and it's starting to go back upwards right now, right? It's going above SMA. Um, the indicators are looking strong. There's volume, there's a stock that people talk about. And as soon as it hit its lows and you see that it's trending upwards again with, I mean, higher supports almost every single day, right? Higher support, higher support, higher support. Then you know it's on the upward trend. And I believe that it will, especially with the new tools and the and, and how the holidays are coming up and brands need to advertise more and more to get more sales for the holidays, it will eventually go up. You know, like Black Friday and all these stuff are coming in December. Uh, it will it will go back up. So I believe this is a good swing, but I've already clocked in profits. As you can see, I got in at uh, 1369, uh, not as low as. I got I got in um, at, at the midday for uh, the, the day it hit its lows, but if I hold, uh, if if the stock does go higher, then I'll watch it. If it starts to consolidate and it drops a little bit lower, then I'm just gonna take my profits. Uh, but right now I'm in for a thousand shares and I already clocked in uh, roughly a dollar per share. So I'm already pretty happy. I hope it continues to go up so I can swing this a little bit longer. But this is definitely a stock that I'm looking at and I do predict that with these high supports and the upward trend and all the good news uh, and with this type of company with the volume, I do believe it can spike back up, back up to uh, above $15 possibly for, uh, for a newer high. So uh, it's something I'll be watching for this next week and I'm in position for. So next one up, Fitbit, another stock that I've been looking at for some time and have been following. Uh, I didn't get in at its earliest times, but it's, it's, uh, I played it the same way as, I'm play, as I played Groupon. Uh, I believe that it's, uh, it's going to be a swing upwards, so I'm in position for this. Um, 
there's a lot of reasons why I do it. I'm, I'm, when it comes to swing trades, I look at everything, right? I look at the past, I look at the technical indicators, I look at the fundamentals, and I look at news. The most important thing, as I mentioned in the previous stock, like uh, finish line, is that you have to be aware of the news. And the thing with Fitbit is that, um, regarding the news, is that Apple's watch, which is their main competitor, wasn't doing so well. So that's a game for Fitbit, first of all. Now they launched a new product that will be in retailers for the holidays on October 1st. That's another indicator. And the revenue has been going up, the profit has been going up, and they're going to be profitable shortly. So it's a, it's a good thing. And plus, if you look at the indicators, if you look at the trend for Fit, Let's see, fit. You know, it's been going upwards. You know, it's always been going upwards. I mean, it has it had its highs, it's consolidating. But if you look at it, you know, higher support, higher support, higher support, long term trend, trending upwards, right? You know, it's going higher and higher and higher. Uh, will it hold hold this, and it'll eventually hit for that breakout to hit its new highs, uh, in the last couple of weeks. I believe so. So this is a stock that I've been I bought in. Uh, I already had my profits, as you can tell. I got in at six point eight, and currently uh, the market closed at six point ninety six. So I already made ten cents. I'm in a strong position. Uh, I'm hoping to get out uh, at around seven oh seven, because I think that's where it's going to kind of top off before the holidays. But uh, with the October first release, which is tomorrow, um, then could drive a lot of sales up it could drive a lot of hype and there was actually pretty good news on it too so right here for example uh fitbit uh was it the fda it has something to do with fda and how they selected fitbit as one of the ones for uh for the healthcare related type of uh watches so there that means there's going to be more apps and if you read the company's updates you know that they released the developers platform which allows developers to create apps for Fitbit and there was already a lot of big companies participating in it such as Starbucks and when you hear big names in partnership with a company that that uh, that isn't as as uh, high in the stock value you know that the price is going to go up whether it will hold in the in the long term we don't know but for a short term trader for a swing trader like me or a momentum trader is you can get some pretty good gains quickly so I'm, I have to see how it performs the next week but right now I'm in it for long and I'm, I'll be more than happy to swing this for up to a week and take my profits from there uh, the last stock that I'm in position for that I want to go over is JNUG so JNUG is a ETF is a gold mining stock I usually don't trade ETFs I usually don't swing ETFs is out of my style is out of the way I do it but, I mean, looking at the past histories, remember, you got to always look at the past indicators and everything. It's, it's the same thing. History repeats itself, right? So drop, you know, like, for example, drop down here from the early trend line, goes back up, drop, and then it, it kind of goes up in these little U-shapes and then goes up, then drop, and then it goes up a little bit. And then I expect it to go up a little bit higher before it drops, but it dropped to its lows right and if the gold price increases which uh gold hasn't been doing so well but is is it can go back up because you know when there's remember this the the stock market or or the commodities market repeats itself so when it's down to its lows it's gonna go back up especially with something like gold or metal or something like that so right now even if it's down it will go back up and um you know i got in at a good time not at it's very very lows uh, I got an 18 something, but I think this is a stock that trades at roughly ATR of like, I think 80 cents. So it moves around 80 cents uh, on average per day. And uh, I think it will eventually spike back up and then before it has its pullback again. So uh, this is something that I'm swinging in right now. I got in yesterday and I'm in position for it. Hopefully I hold on to this for roughly a week or so um, and see when I can hit my profits, then I'll be out, you know. But this is a stock that I'm currently down on and I don't and I won't be exiting right now, especially if you look at the past, all these supports, every time it hit its lows in its 17s, 
it held its game and it went back up. So that's what you gotta look at. There's already uh, indicator one here, indicator two here, and this is the indicator three here. It slowly pulls its way back up. If it pulls back up above 20 and it breaks out above 20, then you know that the stock is gonna go upwards. But again, this is an ETF that, that trades on gold mining. So um, it's something that you have to look at the overall news of the economy and how well gold is doing. But you know, miners don't quit, bro. You know, they're the hardest workers in the world. And when it's at its lows, they'll pull its way back up. So that's my weekly recap. I hope this video kind of gives you guys some insights on, on how I trade. You know, I'm more of a swing trader. But I do do a lot of momentum trading as well. Uh, this week was a green week, so I'm pretty happy about it. And you know, I'll be posting more videos to give you guys more insights and, and the way I trade, my thoughts behind it, and some tips. So uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. If you want some good call outs on stocks or some updates, feel free to follow me on Twitter at it's Wilson 8 Thank you.